Raymond Joshi. Thank you very much uh, for joining the webinar. I'll be giving presentation on BDD with cucumber and spring. I just want to give a bit of profile on myself. Currently, I'm working for Visa Europe as a freelancer consultant as automation framework technical architect, and we're writing um, um, automation framework using Spring, Cucumber, Java, and all the technology um, associated with it uh, for Visa Worldwide. I have two software companies, one in India for um, offshore um, software development services for offshore work, and one in England, um, <clears throat> and we do a lot of uh, our, own, our products for online test, uh, timesheet management. And apart from them, um, I'm, I'm responsible for delivering the <clears throat> iShares.com for BlackRock Asset Management, ETF, ETF and ETC products which I developed. For Barclays Capital, I built the equity and interest rate soap uh, for uh, systems during recession and the mortgage breakdown. Um, UBS uh, Wealth Management, I built a equity investment system. Earlier in 2000, I was involved with the London Underground Networking and Smart Card, which is known as Oyster Card Development. Last year, I provided consultancy using J2E for 3G and 4G network for Ericsson. In my early days of development, I built newsroom and subtitling system for BBC. Apart from that, I worked on a number of projects for scientific and other instrumentation, uh, which are now part of Cambridge and Oxford and MIT universities. Today, I'm going to deal, uh, discuss with the, uh, and deliver with BDD, talk about behavior-driven development and what is behavior-driven testing. And then we'll straight away go into Cucumber JVM, the, um, uh, what, is, what is the role of Cucumber in terms of BDD, what is the development perspective of Maven with the Cucumber dependency, how do you glue the Cucumber and Spring together? And once uh, we have established the theoretical knowledge, then I will turn into the practical aspect of it. In that, I will carry out four demos. Uh, each demos are designed to give you something new. The first demo will be using WebDriver to, uh, sorry, first demo will be using simple spring service called calculator service and adding two numbers uh, and providing the calculation facilities, followed by the WebDriver 2, jumping into the browser facilities, um, which will enable uh, to use the web driver, uh, web driver to Selenium, etc., for using automation and the BDD testing. Followed very quickly by RESTful services using Spring Rest, uh, RESTful template, and finally, uh, just relaxing demo for visiting a URL for automation testing. So you can specify a number of URLs, and then you can use the BDD system to see whether you have got sanity between all your links within your organization. And finally, we'll have a question and answer session where you can ask me uh, and I can deliver those questions. So BDD, what is BDD? BDD is behavior-driven development, but in my book, I call BDD is business-driven development because at the end of the day, what we like to deliver is what business wants. And so uh, you can classify BDD as a behavior-driven development or you can classify BDD as a business-driven business development. So we like, to, um, we like to expose more into what BDD, who invented it, what is business, and what is the delivery conclusion, because uh, BDD is mainly associated with the final end-to-end -end testing of actual behavior, actual delivery. Now, a lot of people have in mind uh, BDD is, um, uh, BDD, what's the myth behind that? And uh, there are three classical English words, um, which if you understand and focus on that, that will make your life easier in terms of the BDD development. So for instance, I've chosen very simple three words from the um, uh, Gherkin DSL domain specific language, uh, because Cucumber uses Gherkin underneath to write the business script, which then used for testing, um, testing the automation or testing framework or testing um, for, uh, behavior. So very simple example here. The way I look at it, given a context or given a setup or given an environment, when an event happens, so what is an event? Event is like something you do, some action you take. For instance, uh, give, uh, given a mobile phone, 
when I click on my phone button, then phone it actually um, delivers you the contact list and other things. And when you press something on contact list, your phone rings to other person. So when when it rings, which means that you have taken some action. But when you hear somebody picking the phone up, then an outcome then an outcome should occur, which means that we are actually uh, we have given the mobile phone, we have taken an action, and we have communicated. So given when then I use in that context, but I will actually go through a bit more in depth uh, as we go along. So who invented it? Uh, a gentleman called Dan North. He created the first ever VDD framework, which is now used worldwide. And this is um, uh, um, very synonymous to agile methodology, agile development for highly automation. Uh, because if you automate something, you take manual inter in interceptions out, and you can build the quality and quality actually, which um, quality and, and you can improve the delivery. So, repeating again myself here, the BDT is known for the behavior-driven development, and behavior comes from the business. Business who writes in forms of scenarios, scenarios which gets tested and scenarios which gets delivered, and scenarios are behavior or business. And why is it important in the community of development? Because if you take an example, we have analyst programmers, we have software developers, we have software testers, and we want to ensure the commonality, uniformity, that uh, the language, the written language spoken and delivered is same. So the BDD, bridges the communication gap between our business analysts, our developers and testers, and to take it further to our stakeholders. So my conclusion from BDD perspective, the BDD is basically a specification of behavior, a specification of um, actions uh, for any component or any product or any delivery, which uh, analyst, developer, and tester delivers. And uh, if you look from a simple perspective, from the development perspective, when behavior starts to emerge for one of the business, uh, for one of the business requirement given by the stakeholder, then the, the products get delivered or the behavior or the business uh, get delivered. Uh, so basically from that perspective I look at, uh, agile is like iterative and incremental, and behavior-driven development is that you get one scenario working, then you move on to another scenario. It works exactly in the same fashion. So behavior, uh, in terms of the um, uh, technical aspect, you can think about functional and system uh, both being tested at the same time. Uh, behavior in terms of the business, if the business requirement, if requirement has been tested. Be, uh, 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 and the BDD in terms of the development, you can say is the top of the TDD. So you have test-driven development for unit testing and the component level testing, and when you're adding the behavior, behavior to the test-driven testing, it becomes the behavior-driven development and behavior-driven uh, testing. So that's my next slide. What is behavior-driven testing? Um, so it's, it's, it's the testing perspective on the behavior. So when you are doing the development, we do test-driven development. When you are writing, when you are writing automation, when you are writing a, a, a business script for which can be tested, we are writing behavior-driven development. But if you combine them together and the test in the behavior way, it is called behavior-driven testing, and which I actually have promoted for Visa International and the Visa Europe um, um, currently. So I will start off with the. Very, very simple example. Assume that uh, everybody nowadays holds the ATM card, and they use ATM card to, to draw the cash, to check their bank balance, uh, or to do any of the household um, uh, utilities using, their, uh, using the cash dispenser and the ATM card. So from the business perspective, we call it scenario. So scenario one will be uh, saying, I want to validate my card. So scenario says, Hemant wants to validate his card, or Joe wants to validate his card. So given in BDD context, uh, as I said, the three words are most important, given, when, and then. Now, 
I know I put I put and in there, but I'll explain the and later on. Assume the and follows whatever the previous uh, uh, synonym is given. So here, the given that I uh, I have a valid ATM card. So given my ATM card is valid, and so and again you can say uh, you can say given again, but there is no need to that because it doesn't follow the English properly. So you can say given that my ATM card is valid and the ATM has got the um, ATM dispenser contains cash because those two criteria has to be satisfied. And the last criteria is and my account has funds. So if you take all the three in context, they all three belong to the given, but uh, is written in a BDD fashion. So given my, my ATM card is valid, given that uh, ATM dispenser has cash, given that my account has funds, now, as I said, there are three aspects of it. Given is setting up a context. When something, when is an action, when something happens. So here, when I draw cash. So here I'm taking action. So I actually associate when with my action. So when I withdraw my cash, then something must happen. So what could happen? My account is debited, which is fine, but that's not good enough. I want to test everything in automaticity. So my account is debited, my cash is dispensed, and my card is returned. So then it's like a expectation. What is your expectation? What are your results? So given is setting up the context when the action is taken, and then the result which uh, occurs after the action. Um, scenario two. Uh, now, as I said, if you are doing an uh, agile-based development, you do TDD for development-wise, BDD from perspective of uh, behavior-driven development. But BDD can be incremental and iterative. So you can break the scenario, multiple scenarios into multiple scenarios. For instance, I can say that I want to validate my PIN. So here the context is the, the context here is slightly different here. Context says, given the ATM card machine is valid, because if the machine is not working, or machine is being uh, damaged, or machine is malfunctioning. There is no further way of. There is no. There is nothing you can do. This is an exceptional scenario. So, given the ATM card machine is valid, then you also need to ensure that before the cash can be dispensed, as an exceptional alternate scenario, that my pin is valid. Because if your pin is not valid, uh, then no matter what happens, you will not be able to withdraw your funds or do anything with your ATM card. So given, again, is part of the given context. Given my ATM card uh, machine is valid, given, or uh, I say and, my PIN is valid, and the ATM dispenser contains cash. Again, that's also valid, and this has come from the previous uh, scenario. And my account has funds. So now all they become part of a part of a given. But here is the difference between here is that it's an incremental and iterative delivery of the BDD. First one, I did not check for the ATM card machine is being valid, but second one, I checked that, and I slowly, gradually move on to that. So given the context that my card is valid, my PIN is valid, the ATM dispenser contain cash, and my account has funds, secondly, what I need to do, exactly the same, I withdraw cash, I take an action, previously, as I said before. Finally, then ensure my account is debited, ensure my cash is dispensed, ensure the card is returned. And all this then and and are my expectation, my result. And in terms of the development point of view, they can be a Hemcrest assert or JUnit or test ng or any of your asserts and kind of or expectation point of view. Now delving right into uh, what is this webinar about? This webinar about spring Cucumber, Java, Maven, pulling uh, and putting and gluing things together. So, for instance, uh, what is required for BDD with Cucumber? One of the fundamental things you must have, because we are not doing a Java development with the Cucumber, we must have a Cucumber uh, dash core dot jar a module um, in uh, module in your project workspace or accessible. Now. Here we are focusing on Java, but Cucumber can work. Cucumber has uh, got plugins or, um, or modules for Scala, for Clojure, for Groovy, Python, Ruby. So you can choose of any of your programming language. 
And Cucumber has also done some work on Scala with the Specs 2 as well. So if you are now moving into the more on Closer and the more on Scala side of it, you can do you can you you can look at Scala Cucumber as well. But uh, in this um, presentation, we'll be focusing on the Cucumber JVM, which is uh, which which, use, which which you are using for Java development. Cucumber originally came from the Ruby community. So if you see most of the most of the code, most of the um, conferences, and most of the webinars, uh, you, you might uh, they all Ruby oriented. But now it has now Java community and other community have started using Cucumber in much more anger, and not just because of Cucumber, people have used JUnit uh, scenario, JBehave, uh, JBehave, all BDD style languages, so it's becoming much more popular. Cucumber written by uh, Aslak Halasi, and he still is available on the most of the conferences and the uh, question and answers, and if you have any issues, etc. He's quite responsive. Um, Cucumber is written in Gherkin, uh, it's called it's Gherkin language, and the given when then is most uh, mostly used, but there are other aliases called and and others which we'll deal later on. Cucumber is also ported for um, .NET and other languages. Um, I mentioned other languages, and uh, it has also been ported now on .NET as well. Um, so you can consider Cucumber is a tool for running your automated acceptance test, or you can consider Cucumber is running your business script, written in Gherkin, or written in BDD style languages. Um, Cucumber itself is written in Ruby programming language, but as I said earlier on, the Cucumber projects are available in Java, Scala, and other, pro other platform. Now, uh, most important part is that underneath the Cucumber is a Gherkin parser which implements the feature file, and, and, list, and I will actually go a bit more into the feature file in the next few slides. So basically what Gherkin Parser does, it takes your feature file, which is just basic plain English text uh, with, uh, with some uh, concept of regular expression and matching pattern, but I'll talk, talk about it later. And, but you can assume it's like a business-facing text or business language or Gherkin language, any language, they're all similar. So, uh, Cucumber Gherkin, uh, given when then, is mostly used for BDD style uh, the type of uh, automated test. You saw and, and can be fitted with given when then uh, anywhere, alias can be done as well. Now, one of the myths people have, uh, be, uh, people say, oh, given, uh, this given is like setting up a context. When is, when is like when you take an action, then when the result is occurs. Yes, that's fine, but Cucumber, itself, a parser, doesn't differentiate between given, when, and then. You can put, uh, you can see uh, later on from my slides, you can put any code between given, when, and then. It doesn't really make a big difference. Um, uh, it is actually used inside the step definition. Um, uh, so you have step definition, which, you're going, which I've just said, uh, said to you now, but we'll be introducing more, uh, more in our next five minutes. So uh, the code is written is inside the uh, inside the step definition, which are matched by the given when then. And what you write inside those definitions is up on us is on the your as a developer, as a tester, as an automator, or uh, or as a business analyst, anybody. So uh, since I, I've been providing a Visa uh, strategic automation framework. I personally drawn few uh, guidelines, uh, which is called Heyman's guideline, or for Visa, you can say. So, given I, I use given where I want to set the scene, when I want to initialize my object, when I, when I want to initialize my business object, or my business data, or my input data, or uh, any kind of thing. So, given is like setting up in context, initializing, and making sure that your uh, environment, everything that you can then carry out further work on that. So, given is like setting up things correctly. When, when it's like an action or activity. So when is I use when I want to press a button. So like uh, given a mobile phone, I want to send an SMS. So when I press the uh, text button, then the ed text um, editor opens. So that's an uh, action. So I use any action associated associate with it inside, inside my when. So always think like an um, when for an action, when you're going to do something with it, when you're going to uh, act on activity. So, 
and then then it's just like a uh, your final expectation your results your output and in terms of the programmers they can assume in they can um, they can think in terms of asserts j unit hem crest uh, test ng any kind of or expect uh, expectation so you can compare your expectation when you executed some action and as i said there are other features like and and other things uh, which are already mentioned in the feature file and if you use given uh, when then and if you use and between so when you follow when and and so you can see the when and is following when so it is also part of an action when the, when and is, uh, when then follows by and then and is also part of the then and um, that's how the uh, underneath it takes care of that now uh, we talk about the cucumber we talk about the bdd we talk about the gherkin language now let's move on what you need as a developer to minimal um, uh, amount of um, um, jar file to get you up and running so uh, first of all i want to talk about uh, installing the cucumber modules in maven project so basically what have i done uh, inside my pom.xml file I have a section of repository, and I know the the, the Cucumber modules are available in my uh, um, uh, not in my as uh, uh, Sonar type repositories. And what I do, I just put down the repository locations, uh, where to go and get for those jar files, uh, or where to go and get the latest file, etc. Um, some people may pick it from other places, but this is the minimum I would need that. Now. Since uh, I want to use the Cucumber runner inside uh, using JUnit type of testing, uh, you will need to you will need to pick up a Cucumber dash JUnit dot jar file as well. Um, here in my uh, slides, I put down 1.1.3, which is the latest one. But currently in my demonstration, I'll be using 1.1.1 because there are some issues um, uh, with 1.1.3, which um, needs to be nailed out. Um, so Cucumber. Uh, JVM, uh, Cucumber, JUnit, Cucumber Java. So all these jar files um, uh, you need for your development. And uh, if you put that in part of pom.xml as dependency, and if you put your repository, it will go and load those uh, automatically for you. Now, as I said in my beginning, that I want to now not just uh, Maven and Cucumber, I want to glue Spring. Because the uh, first thing I've done with the automation framework, that I made automation framework like part of my simple development. And I used Spring um, uh, intensely to bring all the services together, bring all the drivers together. Uh, I used the dependency of injection, and I use, also used the uh, JPA, JPA and the REST template and the uh, JMS uh, support for Spring uh, for automation development. So if you want to uh, if you want to include um, spring if spring development um, sorry spring dependency on injections and beans uh, spawning then you will need also cucumber dash spring dot jar that is an important one and please make sure that when you use the uh, use uh, be consistent with all the other spring uh, uh, spring dot jar files so uh, don't jump between the version between 3.0 and 3.5 and sorry 3.1 be sure be consistent um, consistent and more importantly also j unit make sure j unit uh, currently i'm using j unit 4.11 uh, that works with 1.1.1 and 1.1.3 uh, you just have to ensure that they all are tied together um, and uh, they do uh, they do work in combination of all the jar files now important thing is that cucumber um, it looks for if you if you want to inject um, uh, or inject spring beans um, uh, then Cucumber, uh, Cucumber looks for Cucumber.xml file. Now that file has to be in a class path. And since um, I'm using uh, Maven uh, and Maven for, um, for project workspace, so in Maven you have a uh, you have a uh, source folder and source you have main and test. Inside the main you have a resource folder, and inside the resource folder you need to have this Cucumber.xml file embedded in there. And uh, when the Cucumber runs, it will look for Cucumber.xml file and Cucumber-glue, uh, which, which is not open, which is part of a um, Cucumber. This will also look for. This will also need to look for that. So Cucumber.xml. How to write that? Very straightforward. It's simply writing any of the Spring file. If you've done, uh, if you if you written your Spring XML file, is exactly the same. 
you define your schema location for your bean definitions. I put down three dot dash dot zero, but I I could have put just spring beans. Okay. Important thing is that um, I like to keep my thing modular. I like to keep um, um, keep uh, every individual uh, XML file. So here, Spring Dash Web Driver is associated with my loading in my uh, Web Driver 2 for Firefox or Chrome or in, uh, Internet Explorer. And Spring Dash REST is uh, um, uh, responsible for injecting a REST template uh, kind of thing. And I have other few things for Visa, which is Spring Services and database, other things. But best thing to do is to write your uh, write in modular fashion. You keep your Spring Web uh, Spring files as modular as possible, and then when you need them, you can import them using import resource. Getting back into Spring Web Driver XML. Very, very simple one here. I kept a simple example. Um, I, um, um, I got a simple uh, singleton bean here, which actually uh, spawns Firefox driver. This is for demonstration purposes. I kept it simple. But for real work, what I've done is that I've used the um, environment properties or minus D, uh, ENV, um, and then I, I'm sorry, minus D with the browser, so I can actually say which browser to use. So I can provide dynamically which browser to open. But here, in here for the case of webinar, I just simply kept for the Firefox driver. And this is important for doing your web uh, web development, so because web driver too provides lots of good functionality and uh, uh, to do automation testing for web application, etc. Then Spring uh, Spring REST Spring REST is slightly complicated uh, because here I, what I want to do I want to use the REST template to invoke uh, Google uh, Google HR, Google URL or any other or maybe REST services or uh, for, or maybe uh, hooking into other URLs. So first thing what I did was I used a very simple Apache uh, HTTP client multi-threaded HTTP client manager allows me to spawn up multiple HTTP connections. Um, as, uh, and then I use the commons client HTTP request factory. And what I've done, basically, nothing special. I've just um, uh, inject. Uh, I just did the constructor-based injection using the Spring REST template, and I provided the client factory and the message converters. Now here I've been very simple. In my example, I'm only returning the string file for my REST services. But uh, but mostly I would use the. Um, uh, uh, code house uh, Jackson or fast Jackson or something. So I will actually improve on the uh, message uh, message converters. You can have JSON and XML or any other converters you need. Uh, but for simplicity and again for this webinar, I kept it to the I kept it to the string uh, string converter. Okay, good. I've shown you how to do uh, a Maven dependency. I've shown you how to hook in the Cucumber JVN. I've shown you how to use the Cucumber J unit. I've shown you how to do the uh, Cucumber XML. Now, one thing is important that now I want to run my Cucumber. I want to run my feature file, and I want to get certain. Uh, I want to make sure that I can now deliver my results in the correct format. Now, Cucumber. Uh, so what we need, I call it the runner, or you can call the Cucumber launcher, anything. So here, what I'm doing using, I'm using JUnit Tech act run with and i give the cucumber dot class so i'm saying that i want you to run, i want the jnit to run the cucumber class and the option which i'm giving the there are a number of options that are available uh, for instance the, you can define which feature file to use and i'll i'll deal with that bit further later on as i go with the demo here i'm calling for text equal to at google so at google means that it's, it will look for at google sign in any one of my feature file and it will try to run that tag for me, for automation. Format, uh, there are a number of formats available. Here I'm requesting for Google.json format, and uh, I'll come back to other formats in a minute. So how do I run my Cucumber? Uh, I can run my Cucumber through a command line interface, Cucumber core, so I can just use that. I can use JUnit runner, the Cucumber JUnit. I can have Maven plugin for that, so I can run Maven goal. Or I can run directly from my ID, which is IntelliJ or uh, Eclipse. Uh, I'm using IntelliJ for webinar and uh, for other development community version, uh, open source, um, which works absolutely fine. Cooking over reports. There are three kinds of reports. Uh, one is the pretty report. 
So basically, it, it actually tells you what results have passed, what results have failed, and it gives the uh, stake traces for errors. Uh, if the result has failed, it tells you what has gone wrong. If your string is not matching or your expectation is not matching, or it, uh, it enables you to find out and it gives a line number for the feature file, etc., and line number of other bits and pieces of uh, step definitions. HTML is good because if you're doing um, Jenkins to run all your reports, then it prints up the HTML file, and then you can point to HTML uh, uh, href URL to uh, URL to management or test management or test suite or something where they can click and get HTML report. Uh, you can also, as you saw, that I I asked to do a JSON format. JSON format is quite an important one if you want to do post process uh, into another visual representation. What it means that you can take the JSON file, convert it into your own presentation, and then you can do whatever you like. So it gives you facility to do that as well. Um, so finally, let's start real work now. Glue code. What glues together? And what needs to be done? What needs to be done, first of all, as a developer, as an automator, as a tester, or as an analyst, any one of them can do it. I prefer the analyst to do it. And I prefer the maybe maybe tester to do it to write a Gherkin uh, dot feature file. So extension is dot feature. Write a file, Gherkin file with when, then, given when, then, and the things I talked earlier on. Once they've given us the file, feature file. Second thing, what I want to do uh, as a developer, as an automator, as a coder. Now I want to write the step definition which matches my feature file, um, uh, which matches the definition in my feature file, and I want to glue the code together. I, I can glue the code in Java language, Scala language, Python, any other language. So write a feature file, write the step definition. Inside the step definition, you write the, you write the glue code. And finally, uh, I've written the automation framework, actually. So my step definition for, uh, for Visa uses the automation framework, which simplifies the life of the um, uh, life and it gives the consistency of, uh, amongst the community of the automated, et cetera, to use the same format for writing um, test, test code. So we talk about uh, glue clarification. What is a feature file? Feature file is one written in business style. Uh, business uh, business interface, business stakeholder base, which business understand that kind of language using given when then. From developer perspective, where Cucumber, find, uh, Cucumber finds his feature files, uh, in Maven project, as I said, uh, you have a folder called resource. Inside, you give the package. Same package you give for the step definition. Inside that, you put the feature file. It will go and find that. What are the step definition? A step definition is a small piece of a Java code or Scala code uh, which the uh, Cucumber matches. And what Cucumber matches is the pattern. And the pattern is, is, uh, pattern is what is written in the given, when, then. It will try to match that pattern inside the step definition. Once it matches the pattern, it executes that code. And what gets executed? Um, what gets executed is your step definition inside uh, inside that is your whatever java scala etc from that perspective so your java code and, and ultimately in this case gets executed which is has the matching pattern given when then um, so when you write a feature file each feature file starts with the feature keyword so feature keyword can be saying um, um, test Valid uh, test credit card. Inside that, you could have validate pin. Scenario is validate pin. Scenario can be validate card. Scenario could be validate account. So every uh, every feature file has the main keyword called feature. Feature keyword is followed by scenarios. Scenario can be validate my card, validate my pin, validate etc. I just said the default location for feature files are in source, test, resources, and inside that you can have your package, and in the package you can have your features files. And every feature file, uh, every package uh, should have its own feature file. So, and feature file can have multiple scenario, and every scenario can have multiple steps. 
So think from that hierarchy, feature, scenario, steps. And finally, uh, as I said, Cucumber has option as well, so you can specify what feature file to execute. Um, in this, um, our demonstration for web class, we will talk about uh, searching my test text in a Google page or searching my test in a REST service. So this is going to So the feature file can have a paragraph under it. It can have scenario. So each scenario can have multiple steps, given when then. You can have given and then. You can have when and then. It doesn't, there's no restriction with that. Each scenario can be tagged, and then you can execute the text. You can execute by text as well. So Cucumber JVM underneath will look at your feature file, look at the sentence, look at the pattern, and it will try to match using Java reflection uh, to find the step definition to execute. Okay? Now what I will do, I'll move on to a, a, a real example. A real example here is called calculator. So here is a calculator. Is um, I given calculator a tag called add calculator. And I, def I define a uh, feature called adding two numbers. Or I could define the feature called cal um, cal uh, calculation processing. But here I just been very straightforward. I just gave same name as scenarios. Secondly, I call the scenario add two numbers. So this is the scenario um, that I want to execute. Inside that, I've given two definition only, given and then. Given that I have two numbers. 50-50, and those 50-50 here, where my mouse cursor is pointing, 50-50, are two, you can think in Java terms or development terms, there are two variables. But the business can define in terms of the business language, 50 they understand, 50 is uh, 50 pounds or 50 dollars or 50 euros. I have two numbers, 50-50 to add. And very simple, my mathematics tells me if I add 50 plus 50, I should get 100. So then, I should get 100 as my results. So from the Java perspective, uh, from the language perspective, my pattern matching will be, if, you, if you're familiar with the regular expression, it says given, given um, up arrow, it says match any star of the character, then it will match that expression. Um, if anybody's done matching a regular expression in um, Java or any other thing, D plus says zero, zero to many, um, zero to nine, uh, or one to many digits kind of thing. So here it will try to match that. Now, if you look at that, I got here called, uh, I put a method name, I underline have two numbers. Now, you can put any name you like, but um, I just, for uh, purpose of webinar demonstration, I given this uh, name of the method. And I given two integers, uh, integer number one, number two. And the only thing I do is add two numbers. And the second thing I've done is that when I, given or when, I could have put given or when anything I like. I, I, I can use, as I said earlier on, I can use any of that. And given and when this happens, then I should get result. Again, what I've done, I use void check results. This is just to distinguish between two of them, that you can do both of them. But I think you should sit down with your company and organization and have a coding standards and work out which one suits your organization. And I've done this for demonstration purposes. And ultimately, I use assert equals. This is the, this is the Java, uh, sorry, J unit asserts, which tells me that results I given and result I uh, got after execution is same. So now I'm going to give you the live demo. So, for instance, we start with a simple um, calculator feature file. Add calculator is I given a tag. My feature name is adding two numbers. Scenario that when I add two numbers, um, scenario is my add two numbers. And given that I have two numbers, 50, 50 to add, then I should get result 100. So here is my business uh, facing language, my Gherkin, which business analyst or tester, anybody can write it, and which is given to the testers, or automator, or developers to work on it. After I after I done that, I write my calculator steps, and my calculator steps is add given. So the Cucumber JVM will, using reflection will match this pattern, and then this will call this method. Uh, with this method, 
And as you can see in my step file, after that, then I should get result 100. And it will again match for add then. And then I have got my assert equal J unit, which does the assertion whether good or bad. Now, th this example here that I want you to run calculator, and I want to have output of calculator.html. So here I run using the IntelliJ. I simply run that. Currently, I have a, um, uh, you saw the Cooking Brother XML that I have loaded in two um, XML, uh, Spring XML file. One of them is trying to load my um, Firefox, which takes time because it has to go and look into the, into the uh, Windows 32 and find that. Now it has executed. You can see that it performed two steps here. Uh, calculate, calculate two numbers and get the results out. Now, if you look at the output um, here, this is the output for my um, calculator.html here. So you can see it gives you feature adding two numbers, scenario add two numbers. Given I have two numbers, then the, I should get result. So this has now given me result in lovely HTML format, which I can report to the management. Okay, moving on to the, swiftly moving on to the Google search. Here, what I want to do, I want to now search for test or test cricket or test rugby or test uh, American football in a Google page. So, given again, the, given the context, I visit Google search page, Google.co.uk. When I do something, when I type test in my um, test in the input box as a search string. Then I should get test inside my Google page. Here, just to show you, I have auto wired the web driver uh, uh, and I given the name browser. So basically, spring webdriver.xml that will do dependency injection and that will load in the web driver for us. And then, given I visit my Google search page, what I've done, I've used the web driver and I called the method on web driver to a uh, method called navigate to my uh, URL. So this will now go and navigate to URL. At when I type a search string, then, um, then what I do, I do browser.find element by name Q. You can have by name, by ID, uh, by ref ID, by name, etc. But here I decided to by name Q. Then what I do, I send. Um, then I send my uh, test key or test cricket, test American football, test anything to my uh, to the box. Uh, and just to quickly say that um, if you if you can see that in small letters uh, here, I'm saying that my name is Q here, where my cursor is in the Google. So I use Firebug to find out the, what's the name of my element going to be, and then I use the name element to uh, find the element in there, and then I send the keys to. Then I send the keys here. So basically, then what it then does it basically uh, I got a routine here set. Uh, I want to page to be loaded first. Uh, if the page is not loaded, make sure the page is loaded. I, I want, more importantly, I want to make sure the element is present. So sometime when the may, uh, page comes too fast or there's an AJAX query, we can call the new uh, this web driver wait element, which allows you to wait for the element to uh, be present before you can execute that. And then, but I simply did a search through. I just found whether I got any text called test in my page source. And this is the JSON. This is the JSON output. And you can see that it's quite uh, ugly. It's not very pretty. It is, it is designed for a developer to take this output and convert it into JSON object and then use it post processing. So here is my second demo. Very quickly. Um, here is the feature file, Google, given URL. When I type my test, then I should get search results. Same as before, I've done nothing special. Google steps, you saw in my slides. I do dependency injection with Spring Glue. I got my web, uh, web driver too. Given I visit the Google search page, um, here I navigate to the URL. When I type my text uh, search string like test, 
I shown you on the fire butt how to find the element. Then I send keys to the search string. By the way, I put the delays in there just to show you that um, if the browser is running fast, you can see as a demo. Uh, I won't put that in the real example, okay? And then when when I get the search result, um, what I do, I wait for the element to to be present. I get the text contain, and I just simply do a simple strings uh, uh, strings method on the string object uh, string class. Very straightforward. And this is my run Google example. So what we'll do, we'll run this example and see um, see the real action. So what he's trying to do now is trying to load the Firefox. Hopefully it will try to visit the Google. And then it will find the test, uh, go to test. It will find the test, hopefully. There's a five-second delay. And return, uh, close the browser. Once we done, close the browser. And then we can see that, uh, we can see it's close the browser. And here are the test results basically saying status is passed, and this is the elapsed time. Elapsed time means what time is when. It's, a good, it's time in millisecond from system time in millisecond, something like that. So and this is in JSON format. Um, similar example I have with the REST template. Here, given that I have a REST setup, when I visit when I visit my page google.co.uk, then I should see the URL uh, Google page. Exactly same. I auto wire the REST template. Here I set up uh, check for my REST template. Make sure it's a dependency injected. Here I use REST template uh, get for the object, which means that I want to get the string dot class. So I'm, because I put string message converters only, so my response will be string here. I could add uh, any other object if I like, and then. I should match my search string, which was test. Again, the simple demo. Run REST example, same thing as before. REST feature file, that given, given that I have REST set up, et cetera, when I visit the page google.co.uk, I should see the URL. So rather than, and these are the REST steps, Auto injected my REST template, um, uh, store value for response time. So here I just call the get for object. You saw that before on my slide. And then I look for the case. So what I'll do, um, again, um, I can run this example for you. Run REST quickly. So it will go and uh, Again, it's loading the Firefox browser, which I have not commented out for time being. <laughs> so it, we don't need it for REST example, but this is just for demo. So now uh, this is not important. Important bit will be here. So you can see it has given me the output. What has come for my um, for my REST template object? So this response it has given me. Um, so um, you can see quite easily that how easy to use. Um, and finally, I just want to quickly say that it's not that you just have to provide uh, primitives or simple variables. You can provide the table as well. So here I have provided the here I have provided the table here, which means that my name and Google uh, name and the value, or I can have any object I like. And which means that I can now use the object-based um, development as well. So. For simplicity, what I've done, uh, given the following URL exists, uh, so it actually uh, gives me the pair value. Pair value is my domain object, which gives me the URL list. So when I visit, the, um, when I visit, then I should navigate to various URL. So here you can see, here you can see that I'm iterating to all my URL list. And um, finally, just to just to complete this thing, uh, last final demo. Um, visit URL steps. Um, um, here is my pair value return. Uh, pair value which came from my given, my given from data, data table 
those values came out, and I'm just iterating through that. And in my run, um, run widget URL example, I just uh, basically run through all the my URLs, which is very good for checking the sanity check for all your links. So although it sounds very straightforward, but it's quite important from end-to-end -end integration test. So here it will go and look at google.co.uk. Then it will go and look at my company's website called softwarehouse.co, uh, software development center in India and UK. So it will go and um, point to my website. Once it's done that, it will go and do the yahoo.com. And then finally, when it's done that, it will close the browser. So basically, it gives us the, uh, gives the tester how actually go and see whether all the links are working or not. And uh, that's basically it. We're running out of the time. I would like to thank everybody for listening to me, and now I'll open this session for questions and answers. Hey, <clears throat> hey, Hemant. Um, okay, so yeah, we've got a number of good questions that are queued up. Um, why don't I uh, just start at the top of the stack for you here? Um, let me start with the gentleman that's been most patient and waiting uh, for the longest. Um, let's see. Uh, Balint asks, uh, Hamont, hey, is that a good approach? To oh, by the way, I should say, Hamont, hey, um, I'm reading these questions in reverse order. Okay, so they're from mm -hmm. the first question is from the earliest part of your presentation. Mm -hmm. First question is from Balint. Uh, is that a good approach to write tests for a Java-based application in a different language? Uh, for example, write tests in Groovy for simplicity. I um, yes, um, um, uh, I think any development you do, uh, if you if you write the your test script first uh, in Gherkin, and underneath if you use Groovy or Scala or Java, makes no difference. And so I feel it's a good approach. I feel it's a uh, with my years of experience in the industry and promoting this for the last nine years, the last ten years, uh, BDD and automation and other things, I think it's a good approach. Well, I think what he's saying is that you know if you're if you're using if you're using a Java application, is it mm -hmm. easier to write the tests in a different language, or should you write them in Java, or you know I, could you write in Groovy? I, I think I think you should write in the same language. Uh, the reason behind that is that. If there are any um, uh, because if there are any pitfalls in other languages, then which might impact on your uh, which may impact on your actual delivery of that. If you deliver the uh, if you deliver the code in Java and if you got and if you test it in uh, test in Java, I mean this it becomes quite uh, subjective, Peter. But my gut feeling was that if I was writing in Scala my code, then I'll write my test also in Scala with specs and everything because the Scala will understand uh, the complexity complex uh, the compl uh, uh, the complexity and other bits and pieces to go with that, and also yep. it makes it compact to write as well. Yep. Yeah, I think that makes good sense. Um, next question is from uh, Jairaj. Uh, Jairaj, mm -hmm. um, how does behavior-driven development help in software testing compared to ATDD? Yes, uh, it's very, very important because when you're writing a TDD, uh, you sit down and you write a you write a small module first. And when you write the small module first, you, you, you write the test for the small module and you test. And then you mock the object uh, for other inter interacting objects. So you don't really have the behavior of those objects because the, those behavior has been mocked uh, to because you're focusing on the unit, on the, you're focusing on that side or the component side of it. But when you're writing a behavior-driven development, you're not stubbing anything. You are getting all the complexity of uh, latency and uh, transactional and uh, issues and problems which you'll never see in unit, uh, unit and mock kind of testing. There. Gotcha. Um, another question from the same gentleman, uh, Jairaj. Um, who writes behavior-driven development use cases? Are we saying that the requirements should be captured in the form of given, when, and then? If the requirements should be... It should be written by the my 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 understanding and my philosophy and my promotion to Visa I hope will be to the business analyst and business analyst and the test uh, testers um, should write the this language business analyst should write it and testers should test it or modify or work together 
the way I promote at Visa that our sprint planning meeting, we have business analysts and the testers and the developers together, and we then go and uh, nail out the uh, feature file, and then the feature file becomes the, the what you call the decipher or the good, it becomes the Bible of it, and that's where everything is based on that. Okay, so the business analyst is kind of coming across with the use case, but the tester, whoever whoever is you know possibly the developer, and if you have a organization where you have a separate person that does test writing, I think writing, the then, business you know, analyst should great. write use use case. Uh, use case uh, 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 I mean, do you need uh, the, the behavior driven development? Is says that the uh, use cases can be written with the uh, with the BDD as well, and I think business analysts should write it because then they understand the behavior aspect as well. I think that's hmm. the whole idea of uh, using BDD, so you can bridge the gap between the business analysts and the testers. Yeah, I agree with you. It seems less effective without it, but I can understand how some people might say, wow, you know, we have to go get all our business analysts to learn this, this language, mm. Eek. that's never going to happen, you know. But, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe some organizations, that's a, you know, if that's a priority. Currently, so you're, you're you're educating it's business working together, analysts, right? Uh, you're absolutely right, Peter. We are actually educating uh, because some uh, business analysts and the and the test team to actually sit together and work together. Because one is start of the project, one is end of the project, and they both have yep. to agree. Both has to be in agreement. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, if you yeah, if you want to affect change in your organization, you, you know, you're going to have to do difficult things like get the developers and the business people to talk. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And, uh, um, another question, um, I, you know, Jairaj, you've had two, two questions already, so I'm going to skip uh, and just get to some of the others to make sure we get them, and then I'll come back to your third question last. Um, the next question is from Oliver. Um, would you recommend using behavior-driven development in conjunction with load testing? For instance, uh, JMeter might run a set of Cucumber scenarios as J units. Okay, this is a good question. My... Um, uh, Performance measurements are quite a critical part of the delivery of a big transactional based system so um, i would recommend um, i would recommend b d d for performance testing as well because um, the reason the reason behind that that we need to get the random nature of the uh, scenario you, can, you have to put the random nature of scenarios to make sure you get the same performance and same behavior in that perspective because your behavior shouldn't change when the load changes kind of load changes, so your behavior should be consistent with the load. So if from that perspective, I would use that. And I think it's very difficult to implement it, but I would promote that. Very good. Okay. Um, the next question was from uh, Dimitro. Uh, what about white box cucumber tests with spring dependency injection? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't understand the question very well, Peter. Uh Hey, well, unfortunately, that, that's pretty much what he said. He said, what about white box cucumber tests with spring dependency injection? That's all he wrote. Uh, we can, if you want, so you can ask him to clarify. Uh, I don't understand I the light box. Still... Uh, I don't understand the light box, meaning the reason that the, I use... Oh, the... white, white box, white box. Okay, okay. Uh, with, uh, what I've done is that I've actually written the test framework, architecture of the whole architect and test framework, using Spring underneath to inject uh, using the facilities of uh, Spring templates and Spring dependency injection. But when it came to the um, when it came from the when it came to the automation and the testing development, I provide them with my framework libraries of uh, uh, things like Actor, which is empowered with the services. Actor, which is empowered with the different tasks. Actor, which is empowered with different asserts. Actor, which is empowered with the so which is non-Spring, the Spring which is hidden behind that. So all the uh, so Spring is the hard work Spring is doing in the framework. But as far the development is con uh, development is concerned, they can use the uh, helper classes and other classes to do the do the stuff. And Spring that brings the lightweight uh, into um, uh, uh, putting different kind of services and objects together. That's my hey, man, uh, hey man, Dimitro is clarifying. He says, how do you inject the Spring bean into the cucumber tests? Ah, uh, if you don't uh, cucumber dot XML. Uh, what the Spring, uh, what Cucumber does, it looks for uh, Cucumber dot XML. Inside Cucumber dot XML, you can then import the like I have done, Spring dash Web Driver dot XML and Spring uh, dash REST, and then you can use the auto wired facilities of the Spring, auto wired that into your step definition, and that's how you inject it. 
Excellent. Okay. Uh, going back up the list a little bit, um, uh, Jairaj had another question. Uh, can Cucumber take Excel as input instead of a dot feature? That's a, not, we have to write your customs, um, custom handler for that. What you need to do, write your custom handler, which converts into the data, uh, data table uh, from Excel, and then do it. Cucumber, as far as I understand, don't have direct Excel input. Okay. Let's see. I think uh, there was one other question from uh, Jairaj. Let's see. Uh, I think maybe I got them all, but hold on. He had one clarification. Oh, that's right. Um, he, he asked a question before, but uh, I think there was a typo um, in it or 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 maybe maybe you misunderstood the question. Uh, hey, Mont, he, uh, Jairaj was asking, how does behavior-driven development in software testing compare to ATDD? So, um, uh, yeah, and he, so he, I think I think when you answered before, you compared behavior-driven development to test-driven development, and he was looking for a comparison to ATDD, whatever that is. Uh, sorry, I'm not familiar with that one. Is it TDD asking for test-driven development? Um, he's calling it acceptance-driven test development, A, T, D, D, the letter A, T, D, D. Acceptance-driven, acceptance-driven. So I, 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 think we, I think he's on the right frequency here because acceptance-driven, as long as acceptance is the behavior, mm -hmm. and then they both mesh together. depends what is the definition of acceptance. Acceptance, to my definition, is the behavior or the business, the business delivery. And if the acceptance is the business delivery, then they both match. Okay. You know, uh, Shairaj, if you're, Shairaj, if you're still on the phone, uh, which I think you are, um, you know, I suggest you grab uh, Hemant's email off of the front of his slides. Uh, Hemant, if you would be so kind as to uh, put up your contact information um, sure. at this point, and then maybe what you guys can do is, is continue continue the conversation. Okay. Here is my contact information for anybody. Can you see my slide? Uh, just yes. email me, um, and uh, I will reply back. To, and uh, you can uh, we can communicate. And I can tweet uh, if something is useful. Then I can tweet as well, so everybody can get benefit. So I will re I request people to log on uh, to uh, to actually link into my Twitter as well. So I every now and then I keep tweeting things uh, regarding new concepts, new features, or any of my development going on around the worldwide. 